Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Neil Galvin. I'm a registered nurse and I do have a degree in medical surgical nursing. I create my nursing educational videos to help nursing students and nursing professionals like you with their studies. If that is something that you are interested in, consider subscribing. If you are already a subscriber though, thank you so much for your love and support. I see you. I upload my nursing educational videos Mondays, Wednesdays, and for Fridays. Please make sure to subscribe now. You hit that notification bell so that you will be the very first to watch my newest uploads. Also, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share with your friends because that would really help them know that you like to see more contents like this. Without further ado, you guys let's jump into the video good morning good morning good morning good afternoon and good night just in case i don't get to see you maraming maraming salamat po for coming into class for today and like you see on the title and like you see on your screen today is another nursing test banking videos for you and we're gonna have your pnle for nursing licensure examination pnle this is all about care of clients with physiologic and psychosocial alterations. Ngayon, kung hindi mo pa napapanood yung other nursing test banking video I created on my channel, I'll be putting the actual playlist link on the description box. Or whenever the icon button pops out, click the one out because I'll be putting it there together with the other playlist I have on my channel. Before further proceed, you guys, I would just like to grab this opportunity to thank all the newcomers, the noob, uh, new subscribers that we have have welcome po welcome welcome to my channel kung hindi mo pa ako kilala ako si Neil Gave I'm a nurse for 10 years I have a master's degree in uh, medical surgical nursing and I'm currently working in ICU I'm getting my tenureship in ICU so basically I know what I'm talking about I'm that bitch nah just kidding <laughs> You guys, you have no idea. I've been trying to really uh, shoot this one for four times now. For some reason, my desktop is not working. It's not cooperating with me. And it's just getting into my nerves. I was supposed to upload this yesterday, but I was just like, it's been five times already. Four times already. And every time I get to like the half of the video, it just crashes. Jesus have mercy. But anyways, nothing can stop us now because I am here and maraming maraming salamat po sa patuloy niyong pagsuporta at pagtangkilik sa channel ko. I would just like to grab this opportunity to let you know where we at right now in terms of our goals. We are really moving too fast. So fast, slowly but surely, I must say, to 20,000 subscribers. And you guys, I know that you can make it happen. We can make it happen to 20,000 subscribers by March, by the end of this March. And I know you can, you guys can definitely help me with that. Keep on sharing, liking, and spreading the news about my channel. Kung hindi mo pa ako pinapahal, follow sa mga social media accounts ko. I have basically everything. So all the links to my socials are on the description box. I have this video presentation. This online class is also going to be available on my Facebook page. It's Neil Gave Official. Check the one out. And I have a podcast channel. It's 3 a.m. Conversation with Neil Gave available. You can stream it on um, Spotify and Anchor. Tomorrow I'm going to be uploading uh, an episode. So I miss doing my podcast. So yeah. I'm excited. So without further ado, you guys, let's me let's start this this discussion. I'm gonna be sharing to you ten board exam type of question that you may come across in this upcoming board exam. Mind you, guys, this is PNLE four. Let me share to you the objectives. All right, so we only have two objectives every time we do a nursing test banking video. Okay, one I am going to provide and discuss to you board exam type of questions. That's for sure. Then. I am going to provide rationalization for each board exam type of questions. If there's anything, hold a minute. If there's anything that I want you to take away out from this discussion, that is two things. The rationalization. Para, bakit, kasi, kahit pag ikutikutin yung tanong pagdating ng board exam, baguhin yung structure, baguhin yung multiple choices. You know exactly why is that the right answer. You know how to spot it. You know when to spot it. Because you know by heart why is that the right answer. And also, I want you to take note of how I do my nursing, uh, ner um, what's this, test-taking strategy. How I mark the keywords. How I try to digest the questions in order for us or in order for me to arrive on the answer, okay? Now, let me share to you the instructions for today's examination. 
You'll be given 10 board exam type of questions. I'll be reading the questions and the choices for you. You have 5 seconds to answer each question. The answer is revealed instantly after each question with rationalization. You choose the letter of the correct answer. Good luck, nurses. Okay, I want you to think about this way. Let's say that this is the ten, uh, last 10 questions on the board exam. How well would you like to perform? That is the mindset. That is the question that I want you to put in. Take this one seriously. And I want you to put your score on the description box. And uh, description box on the comment section below. Okay? Let's start with board exam type of question number one. Herbert, a 45-year-old construction engineer, is brought to the hospital uh, unconscious. After falling from a two-story building. So, anong case mo? Fall. Two-story building. See si Herbert, 45 years old, unconscious. When assessing the client, the nurse would be most concerned if the assessment revealed. Alin daw dito sa mga assessment finding na to, ang pinaka mababahala ka. Or you will take highest priority. Is it A, reactive pupils? Is it B, depressed? Fontanelle C, bleeding from ears? Or D, an elevated temperature? Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter C. Bleeding from ears. Listen to this. The nurse needs to perform a thorough assessment that could indicate alteration in cerebral function, increased ICP or yung tinatawag nating intracranial pressures, fractures, and bleeding. Bleeding from ears occurs only with basal skull fractures that can easily contribute to increase intracranial pressure and brain herniation. Hence the answer is letter C. Malina Bayon, Malina. Question number two. Nurse Sherry is teaching male client regarding his permanent artificial pacemaker. Ano situation? Permanent artificial cardiac pacemaker. Itong tanong. Which information given by the nurse shows her knowledge deficit about the artificial pacemaker? Tanong, alin sa mga statement na to or health education na to given by the nurse will tell you that the nurse doesn't know anything. She doesn't know a fuck about cardiac pacemaker, meaning negative, a wrong health education. Negative statement ang hinahanap po dito. Malinao? Malinao. Let me read to you the choices. Is it A, take a pulse or take the pulse rate once a day in the morning upon awakening? B, may be allowed to use electrical appliances. C, have regular follow-up care for compliance. Or D, may engage in contact sports. Five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Very good. Letter D. May engage in contact sports. Here's why. The client should be advised by the nurse to avoid contact sports. This will prevent trauma to the area of the pacemaker generator. That is why, for any patients who have artificial cardiac pacemaker, contact sports at any form, basketball, boxing, um, volleyball, um, karate. Karate is a big no-no. Hence, the answer is letter D. Okay? All right. Proceed. Question number three. The nurse is aware that the most relevant knowledge about oxygen administration to male client with COPD is... Ito, madalas tong tinatanong sa board. Lumalabas ito. Okay? Ang tanong lang naman ganito. Ang pasyente mo COPD... At magpo-provide ka ng health teachings regarding oxygen administration. Ano yung high consideration mo based sa mga choices na ito? That's how you approach this type of question. Is it a oxygen at 1 to 2 liters per minute is given to maintain the hypoxic stimulus for breathing? B. Hypoxia stimulates the central chemoreceptors in the medulla that makes the client breathe. C. Oxygen is administered best using a non-rebreathing mask. Or D, blood gases are monitored using a pulse oximeter. Your five seconds starts right now. Time is up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good, you guys. Letter A, makinig. 
Oxygen at 1 to 2 liters per minute is given to maintain the hypoxic stimulus for breathing. Nga po ang tamang sagot. Ito ang rationalization. Makinig na mabuti ha. Madalas pa, paulit-ulit tayo sa COPD concept. Pati auto administration. Kasi madalas talaga itong tinatanong sa board exam. Iba-iba lang na itsura. COPD causes a chronic CO2 retention that renders the medulla insensitive to CO2 stimulation for breathing. So ano bang nagdadrive sa atin for ano for breathing? Hindi ba ang uh, tawag dito ang deprivation natin sa CO2? Not oxygen but CO2. Okay? The hypoxic state of the client then becomes the stimulus for breathing. Giving the client oxygen in low concentrations will maintain the client's hypoxic drive. Kaya nga po, meron lang tayong ano, um, auto-saturation target sa mga pasyenteng COPD na a-admit sa hospital. Hindi po pwedeng mag-exceed doon kasi pwede sila mag-develop ng carbon dioxide retention which can be ruled out through your ABG and VBG. Malinaw? Malina. Next question. Board exam time for question. Number four. Tony has undergoes a left thoracotomy and partial pneumonectomy. Anong case? Left thorac- post-left thoracotomy and partial pneumonectomy. ICT or chest tubes are inserted and one bottle of water seal drainage is instituted in the operating room. In the post-anesthesia care unit, Tony is placed in Fowler's position on either his right side or on his back side. The nurse is aware that this position, tinatanong ka, bakit daw si Tony nilagay sa position na ito? Yes, may mga ganitong tanong sa board exam. Pati positioning, tatanungin sa'yo, girl. But in a situational form. So, si Tony daw nilagay sa ang position, nilagay sa siya, 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 right side or, or on his back position. During the post-op, sa post-anesthesia care unit. Bakit? That is tanong. That is tanong. <laughs> That is the question. A. To reduce incisional pain. B. To facilitate ventilation of the left lung. Or C. To equalize pressure in the pleural space. Or D. Increase what venous return. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good, very good. Letter B is the right answer to facilitate ventilation of the left lung. Ito ang rationale. Since only a partial pneumonectomy is done, there is a need to promote expansion of this remaining left lung by positioning the client on the opposite unoperated site. Hence, the answer is letter B. Bago tayo mag-proceed sa question number 5, kung hindi ka pa nagsusubscribe sa channel ko, nakakahiya naman sa'yo. Huwag kang ano dyan, ha? mag-hit ka ng no- subscribe button and notif bell. Automatic. Oo, hindi mo na pinag-iisipan yan. Okay? Eto na tayo. Board exam time for question number 5. Uh. Christine is scheduled for a bronchoscopy. When teaching Christine what to expect afterward, the nurse's highest priority of information would be post-op ng bronchoscopy, anong health teaching mo? That is the question. Pahirapan ng sarili. Is it A, food and fluids will be withheld for at least two hours? B, warm, saline, gargles would be, uh, will be done Q2 hours. C. Coughing and deep breathing exercises will be done Q2 hours. Or D. Only ice chips and cold liquids will be allowed initially. What is the answer to this one? Think about it. Your five seconds starts now. Oopsie. That is the time. That tells me. That's the sound that tells me your five seconds is over. So, what is your answer? Okay, very good. The answer to this one, nurses, is, oh gosh, letter A. I thought it crashed again. So, A, flu, uh, food and fluids will be withheld for at least two hours. Why? Prior to bronchoscopy, the doctor, sp- the doctor sprays the back of the throat with anesthetic to minimize the gag reflex and thus facilitate the insertion of the bronchoscope. Giving the client food and drink after the procedure without checking on the return of the gag reflex can cause the client to what? Aspirate. 
So risk for aspiration. The gag reflex usually returns after two hours. Hence, withheld muna ang ating pagkain, ang fluid sa pasyente for two hours post-bronchoscopy. To avoid what? Aspiration pneumonia. Malina ba yun? Malina. Next, question number six. Nurse Tristan is caring for a male client in acute renal failure. Anong sitwasyon? Merong acute renal failure. AKI. The nurse should expect a hypertonic glucose insulin infusions and sodium bicarbonate to be used to treat. Ano daw? Ang kadalasang, itong tanong, anong kadalasang, what you might call this? Electrolyte imbalance sa mga pasyente may AKI. Ano ang treat mo? Kapag gumamit ka ng insulin infusions and hypertonic glucose, sodium bicarb, anong electrolyte imbalance yon? Is it A, hypernatremia? Is it B, hypokalemia? Is it C, hyperkalemia? Or D, hypercalcemia? Your five seconds starts now. There you go, you guys. What is your answer? I'm gonna still give you a little bit, a minute to think about it. Ano kaya sa tingin nyo ang tamang sagot? Huh? Very good. Letter C is the right answer, you guys. Hypercal. Hyperkalemia. Increased level of potassium in blood. Okay, hyperkalemia is a common complication of acute renal failure. It's life-threatening if immediate action if immediate action isn't taken to reverse it. The administration of glucose and regular insulin with sodium bicarb, if necessary, can temporarily prevent cardiac arrest by moving potassium into the cells and temporarily blah, 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 temporarily reducing serum potassium levels. Hypernatremia, hypocalcemia, I hypokalemia and hypercalcemia don't usually occur with acute renal failure and aren't uh, treated with glucose, insulin, or sodium bicarb. Kasi nga, ayaw mo mag, gusto mo ma-prevent ang cardiac arrest. Siyempre, monitor mo yung hyperkalemia through your ECG. ST segment elevation. Yes. Ito na tayo. Board exam top of question number seven. Ako, last three questions na nga. Ah, last four. Tama. Last four. Miss X just been diagnosed with con- uh, condylomata. Ano daw? Condylomata. Condylomata acuminata. O in short, genital warts. What information is appropriate to tell this client? Sa mga pasyenteng diagnosed with genital warts. Scientific name, condylomata acuminata. Ang taray, di ba? Parang ano lang? Parang spell sa Harry Potter. O, di ba? <laughs> Eto na tayo. This, ano, ano daw ang i-health teaching mo sa mga may genital warts? Is it A, this condition puts her at a high risk for cervical cancer, therefore she should have a PAP o papinocolu smear annually. PAP smear annually. Okay? Or B, the most common treatment is metronidazole, which should eradicate the problem with 7 to 10 days. C. The potential for transmission f- to her sexual partner will be eliminated if condoms are used every time they have a sexual intercourse. Or D. The human papilloma virus, HPV, which causes condylomata acuminata, can be transmitted during oral sex. Interesting. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is your answer? Le- very good letter. Letter A is the right answer. Ayan. So this condition puts her at high risk for cervical cancer. Therefore, she should have a pap smear annually. Women with condylomata acuminata at high risk for cancer of the cervix and vulva. Yearly pap smears are very important for early detection. Because condylomata acuminata is a virus, there is no permanent cure. Because condylomata acuminata can occur on the vulva, a condom won't protect sexual partners. 
HPV can be transmitted to other parts of the body, such as the mouth, oropharynx, and larynx. Hence, the answer is letter A. Proceed na tayo, board exam type of question number 8. Gusto ko yung energy ko for today's video. Video. Uh, diba? Nag-e-enjoy ba kayo? Dapat lang. Oo. Huwag kayong ano dyan. Maganda to na meron kayong piece of paper. You write your answers on the piece of paper. Practice mo. Pakinggan mo yung boses ko. Mga ganyan-ganyan. Uh, tapos i-absorb mo yung rationalization. Dapat mag-make sense sa'yo. Hindi pwedeng hindi nag-make sense. Okay. So, question number eight, Marites was recently diagnosed with genitourinary problem and is being examined in the emergency department when palpating her kidneys. The nurse should keep which anatomical fact in mind? Oh, palpation. Ang case mo, genitourinary problem. Genitals and, ano, G-I-G-U, genitourinary. Alin daw? ang ilalagay mo sa utak mo kapag nagpapalpate ka na ng kidney. Is it A, the left kidney usually is slightly higher than the right one? B, the kidneys are situated just above the adrenal glands. The average kidney, or C, the average kidney is approximately 5 centimeters long and 2 to 3 centimeters wide. Or D, the kidneys lie between the 10th and the 12th thoracic vertebrae. Ibig sabihin, in terms of anatomical position of your kidney, ano yung i-bear in mind mo? Palpation tayo, ha? Assessment. Oh, ito na tayo. Your five seconds. Wait, where's my watch? Hala. Mawag na. Saglit lang. May commercial tayo. Hello, sis. Oh, oh nagsushoot ako. Ah, uh, ito na. Tawag ako 5 minutes pa tapos na 'to. Ah, uh, life threatening ba 'yan? Now na ba 'yan? Ah, uh, abon uh, so saglit lang. Saglit lang guys, magko-commercial tayo. For today's video. Yes, bebe, 5 minutes bebe tapos na si Kuya. Okay, sis, love you. Opo, bebe. Oh, yung sweet. And that was just my my nephew. Oh, my lovely nephew. Ah, ito na tayo. Hoy, nasa na tayo? Oh, okay, na, 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 na sa commercial. Hindi ko ikakat yon for today's video. Kasama yon. <laughs> Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. Ito na tayo. What is the answer? Letter A is the right answer. The left kidney usually is slightly higher than the right one. Aba, ngayon mo lang nalaman yon. Ito na, ako rin. Ngayon ko lang nalaman yon. Ito, bakit? The left kidney usually is slightly higher than the right one. An adrenal gland lies stop. Uh, lies atop each kidney. The average kidney measures approximately 11 centimeters long and 5 to 5.8 centimeters wide and 2.5 centimeters thick. The kidney or the kidneys are located retroperitoneally in the posterior aspect of the abdomen on either side of the vertebral column. They lie between 12th, interco uh, 12th thoracic and 3rd lumbar vertebrae. Hence, the answer is letter A. Next, board exam type of question number 9. Last two questions, make this one count. At kung hindi ka pa nagsusubscribe, magsubscribe ka na nakakahiya naman sa'yo. Yes, just Tony with chronic renal failure, CRF, is admitted to the urology unit. CRF. The nurse is aware that diagnostic tests are consistent with CRF if the result is. Anong diagnostic test ang magpapatunay na meron siyang CRF? Si to, si just Tony. Is it A, increase pH with decrease hydrogen ions? B, increase serum levels of potassium, magnesium, and calcium? Is it C, blood urea, nitrogen, BUN, 100 mg per deciliter, and serum creatinine, 6.5 mg per deciliter? Or D, uric acid analysis, 3.5 mg deciliter, and pheno, ano to? Phenolol, phenol sulfon, Talene, PSP, excretion of 75%. Your five seconds starts now.
Alright. What is the answer? Kung masyado mabilis yung 5 seconds, pwede ba namang i-pause at pagmuni-munihan mo? Hindi naman po ako magagalit. Okay? Eto na tayo. The answer to this is letter C. Period. B-U-N. Blood urea nitrogen of 100 mg and serum creatinine of, creatinine of 6.5 mg per deciliter. Listen to this. The normal BUN level ranges 8 to 23 mg per deciliter. The normal serum creatinine level ranges from 0.7 to 1.5 mg deciliter. The test results in option C are abnormally elevated, reflecting CRF and the kidneys to decrease ability to remove non-protein nitrogen waste from the blood. CRF causes decreased pH and increased hydrogen ions, not vice versa. CRF also increases serum levels of potassium, magnesium, and phosphorus and decreases what? Serum levels of calcium. A uric acid analysis of 3.5 mg deciliter falls within the normal range of 2.7 to 7.7 mg per deciliter. PSP. Excretion of 75% also falls with the normal range of 60 to 75%. Okay? Last questions na tayo. Make this one count. Eto na. Boris, I'm tough for question number 10. Katrina has an abnormal result on Papinokolau. Ano daw? Isa pa. Papinokolau Kolowu test. I probably butchered that one, but you know the spelling that's on your screen. Papinokol- Papinokolau test. Ano ba ito? Hindi ba na banggit na natin to nung mga previous question? After admitting that she read her chart while the nurse was out of the room, Katrina asks, what, what dysplasia means? Which definition should the nurse provide? Ano daw ang dysplasia? Considering that she undergo, she undergone this test, papilinokolaw test. <laughs> is it a presence of completely undifferentiate, undifferentiated tumor cells that don't resemble cells of the tissues of their origin? Is it B, increase in the number of normal cells in normal arrangement in a tissue or an organ? C, a replacement of one type of fully differentiated cell by another in tissues where the second type normally isn't found? Or D, alterations in the size, shape, and organization of the differentiated cells. Your five seconds starts now. Time is up, you guys. What is the answer? Very good. Letter D. Alterations in the size, shape, and organization of the differentiated cells. This place refers to an alteration in the size, shape, and organization of differentiated cells. The presence of completely... Uh, undifferentiated two more cells that don't resemble cells of the tissues of their origin is called anaplasia. An increase in the number of normal cells in a normal arrangement in a tissue or an organ is called hyperplasia. Replacement of one type of a fully differentiated cells by another in tissues where the second type normally isn't found is called metaplasia. Binigyan kita ng mga plasia plasia dyan, ha? Balik-balikan mo yon. Thank you so much, you guys, for watching. I hope you learned something. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Finally, I was able to, uh, to shoot this one. Oh, my God. Please like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more nursing educational videos. Let me know if you have other nursing topics you want it, you want us to cover. Comment it down below. And I want to know your scores. Put them down on the comment section. Abangan mo nga yung upload natin for next week because that's going to be highly educational and, you know, entertaining for all of you guys. Tulungan mo nyo lang ako. Ipamalitan nyo na sa Radyong Sira ang pinakabago, pinakafresh, at ang pinakalibring nursing review center sa balat ng YouTube. Don't forget, to follow me on all my other social media accounts everything is at Neil Galve except for my TikTok account which is Neil Galve Official like I said I have a Facebook page this video is going to be available on my Facebook page it's Neil Galve Official I have a podcast channel available and you can stream them on you can stream the episodes on Spotify and Anchor. It's 3 a.m. conversation with Neil Gave. Watch out for the episode for tomorrow. It's going to be amazing. And just in case no one, nobody told you this, 
I'm here to tell you that I love you. I appreciate you. I am proud of you. You have a good one.